Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Monday afternoon. Happy wet Monday afternoon. Hope well, hope you're looking after yourself and you had a good weekend, ready for a good week ahead. We're talking Spurs and we're talking Man City versus Spurs and the very interesting game is the best way I'm going to sum it up that happened last night. So we'll talk a little bit about sort of some, some of the stats and what happened. I will touch on the referee incident. I will, don't worry. Um, and just sort of, I don't know, kind of not berating certain pundits, but definitely giving my two cents just as much as they're allowed to give their two cents on what we should be doing, AK, what Anne should be doing and why they're wrong. So we'll touch about that in a minute. But let's talk about it. So 3-3 was the game against Man City yesterday. Uh, Spurs opened the scoring through Son on, on basically a counter-attack where on through their corner, they left too little a man, a man back. And basically, with just raw pace, we, we basically just went out hill into Kulisewski, who freed out into Son, who, I don't know, Doc, who just didn't seem at the paces really yesterday, and then just sort of nicked off him. Edison probably should have saved it in all honesty. I won't lie, he probably should have saved it. And we get the goal. And then yeah, you fast forwards, you know, only what, a couple of minutes later, Spurs score again in the other end. And it was Son in the other end again. And um yeah, it was it was one of those that we scored, we celebrated, they scored a bit later or a couple of minutes later, and you sort of sat there and went, That was about right. That's what I. That's what you and I have come to expect as Spurs. You, know, you get a lead and then you just throw it away straight away, and you're like, "Yeah, fair enough." Um, I know, joke, isn't it? And then, uh, yeah, then Foden again. They took the lead through Foden around that 30, 31st minute. And the thing is, with the first half, we could have been four, five, six down. To be honest, you know, Haaland missed a lot of sitters. They hit the post and bar. I think at uh, one time each, and they were they were. They hadn't hit, I think they hit fourth gear through periods of that first half, but they definitely were much the better team than us. We we looked like we could barely get out of first gear. We looked like we could barely get our own half, to be honest. We, we kept trying to play our way out and it just wasn't working. So yeah, we get to half time 2-1 and I think all things considered, it's not a bad half. Um, just on the result wise, performance wise, it wasn't good. Second half, n night and day, night and day. We were miles the better team. Um, you know, we, we came out in the second half playing our stuff. And it was so funny. You get you got on commentary of Neville and Carrier going, what are they doing? What are they doing? They're trying to play against Man City, blah, 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 blah. They literally said, I remember they said it once. I can't remember what exactly it was. They said it once and we knocked it around 15, 20 times to create an opportunity. And it was like, lads, lads, you just calm down. You're thinking of the here and now. You're not thinking of the longer term picture of what we're trying to build. Pep didn't come in and play the way Man City do right now in his first season. Klopp did. And I remember Klopp's, like, his squad in the first season. Like, uh, he had Lambert. He had, um, I was trying to think of the strikers he had. He might have had Balotelli. I think he had some pretty average players. I can't lie. And, and it took him a couple of seasons to really kind of get Liverpool to where they are now, you know, with, and just going to take the same thing, you know, when you think of successful teams of Chelsea's past, they've always done really well. And I think that's what people kind of look at. They go, well, look, no, you should be doing it. You should be doing it. You should be doing it. You spent some money, you should be doing it. But I'm just trying to change a style of play, a club that has been pretty negative for about four or five years to now fast forwarding and going, we're going to play really exciting football. We're on the front foot. We're going to press high. You're changing a whole mindset, and that's that's always going to be a difficult thing. And we're always going to go through bumps this season. So when fans kind of go, season's over, it's done, whatever. Did you ever, did you really expect a top four finish? I was expecting top six personally. I was hoping for top six. I wasn't expecting to be leading the <coughs> leading the title. To, well, I say title race. I don't think Spurs are ever in it, but being in top of the league. You know, having a manager winning three back-to-back -back manager of the month. I didn't expect any of that. So this season has shown me that we can play the way we want to play against any team. But not only that, with a fit squad, we can play against anyone. And that's the exciting thing. Um, yeah, then Lo Celso scored. And, you know, I've kind of been one of those Lo Celso believers, I won't lie. When we first signed him, I was a massive believer you know, he didn't really have the best of opportunities under his first season at Poch because he was a Poch signing. Um, 
Spurs fans seem to kind of just kick him to the curb and go, it's rubbish, even though they've barely seen him play. He's obviously scored in the last two games, which is quite nice. And they were both good goals. And he was really good yesterday, you know, just getting on the ball. He was trying to... When he could get on the ball, he was trying to slow it down, dictate a bit of tempo. In the second half, he was running the show. He was, I think, the best midfielder on the pitch in the second half, for sure. You know, people got upset that he was taken off. And it was like, yeah, but you can't... He hasn't played a ton of football this season. He probably isn't as fresh as you think because he's been at Argentina. He's had injuries. Same with Madison. You know, sometimes you can't play 90 minutes. That's okay. Um, then they scored again through Grealish, which Grealish did something that Haaland couldn't do, and that was hit the hit the um, hit the target from six yards out. And yeah, scored a goal. Gave oh, I loved it. He gave it the massive one on the celebration. It reminded me of Sterling's one on the Champions League quarter final. Gives it a big one, screaming into the camera. Kind of thought he probably thought we've done it. We, we've won this game. Can't blame him. To be fair. And then, obviously, we come in the 90th minute of Kulisevsky's header against Nathan Ake, which it was a body check kind of style header into the top corner. Edison didn't move. Gorgeous header. You know, gave it the LeBron James silencer, which I loved. I'm a big, I'm a big LeBron James kind of guy. So I was, I was loving that as well. Um, yeah, all in all, look, I think City fans will sit there and say that we were robbed. We were better than them. We were this, that and the other. You were for the first 45 minutes. I'll, I'll give you that. In the second half, you weren't the better team. You weren't the better team. Now, Spurs didn't create a ton of great opportunities like City did. But I would say a lot of cities came in the first half. And if your main guy, you know, second in the Ballon d'Or voting, can't hit the target from six yards out multiple times, it wasn't just the one time, it was multiple times, and you're not going to score, you know what the old saying is, if you don't take your chances, you're going to get punished. And they got punished. Now, on the referee decision, now look, it, I thought Simon Hoop had a very good game. And that, this isn't me being a biased fan that he's had a really good game. He booked all the City fan players. He gave all the things to Spurs. No, I think he was a good referee leading into that um, that contentious decision because he let the game play. Let the guys play. He fl let it flow. He didn't really try and stop it. He tried to kind of get out of the way, if I'm honest. So I think if you can... Lee, if you can look at the referee as a whole leading into that decision, I think both set of fans would go, he's had a really good game. Um, you, yeah, the odd decision, the odd throw in or things like that, you, yeah, but you, you're human, you're allowed to make mistakes. So I, leading into that, I thought he had a really good game. Now, but on that one single situation, he's great for letting, and by the way, I'm a qualified referee. I have qualified, so I know. He was. He did a great decision letting the play continue. Let Harlan get to his feet. You know, let play continue. It's a bad decision. It is. It's also a bad decision by the linesman. It's not all down to Simon Hooper, the referee. The bad decision also can, can go to the linesman. The referee can only see it from behind as the ball gets played. He's probably thinking, that's going to get intercepted. I'm going to pull it back now. But you're also told to let the play happen. Let's see what happens. Now, obviously, you know, the whole thing of Grealish was going to score... That's a nice that's a nice thing. He's got three defenders around him. He's still got to score the goal. He has to beat Vicario. We don't know. It's it's a very if but and maybe sort of situation on like that. But it was a bad decision. It was. Um you know, we can't we can't keep punishing refs as well. We need to build them up as well to a degree. And you know, Spurs have been on the receiving of some pretty terrible decisions, as well as we've been on the receiving of some very nice decisions. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm this, that or the other. We've had some good things. We've had some bad things. But you can't keep demoting refs down divisions and bring up refs from other divisions and keep that circle going. Also, you can't just bombard the ref and sit around him and, and get in his face and things like that. You know, you saw it. You saw it. And I mean, Harlan's been charged with some sort of FA conduct charge or something. So you can't do that. You know, we saw, we've seen players this season get booked and sent off for dissent. They did it, got nothing. I think Simon Hoover may have known I might have mucked up there. I can't then double down and give bookings out, which you should have done. You're well within your right to book some of those players. And that's the that's thing. You can't just manipulate and bully referees. And, and that's hopefully going out of the game slowly but surely. But all in all, it was a great point. You know, we played off football in the second half. We were brilliant in the second half. I thought for a back four... Of full backs, 
that was probably as good as you were going to get. There was mistakes that happened. You know, we, we didn't track runners very well. You know, we gave the ball away 35 yards up. Basuma had a couple of clangers, but also Basuma did some good things. You know, Kudusevsky was good. You know, Lacelso was very good. Brian Hill, I thought, had a decent game. The amount of Spurs fans go, he's not good enough for this level. You've seen him for two games in this in this system. How about you give him five or six at least? That I didn't agree with. You might not be a Brian Hill fan. That's fine. But telling him you're not good enough at this level after two games, I'll tell you now is a joke. That's a joke. And I don't know who you are. I don't care who you are. I'm happy to argue. You can, you might not rate him, but if you rate him off of those two games, he was decent against Villa anyway. Just calm down. Oh, he got outpaced by Walker. Okay, great. 99.9% .9 of this earth can get outpaced by Walker. It's not a big deal. You'd get outpaced by Walker, so would I. And I'm 27, I'm younger than Walker. So the whole idea that Brian Hill was 22 and got outpaced, great, I'm 27, I'd get outpaced. So pipe down on that one, yeah? Um, leading into, obviously, these next few games, salvation and happiness might be coming back a little bit. You know, we've got Saar, we hope that will be back this week. He had a bit of a hamstring issue, but it wasn't a big one. We hope he's back this week. But the big one's back. Oh my God, I don't think any Spurs fan will be so excited to see Christian Romero back in the team on Thursday night. And he will be back in the team Thursday night. And I actually think him and Ben Davies will be suffice leading into January. I don't think like Ben Davies and Romero is the best partnership in the world, but it's better than what we've got. So it is a huge upgrade to get a centre-half who can defend corners and high balls, um, but also is good at playing out the back. He's confident. He's quick enough, you know. That ball to Grealish wouldn't have happened. I think a few of their goals wouldn't have happened with Romero at the back. So it's good that they're back. But on my final note, even with 11 players out injured, Richarlison, who could only play about five minutes because he's that's what Andrew said, you know, missing players, players playing in different positions, playing away at home to the champions, with a full squad, we win that game. That's the exciting thing. Um, yeah, to give you an update, there is more videos today. I've got a big transfer video roundup to, to sort of release later on. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Um, but anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section of your thoughts and feelings about the game. You know, your takeaways, your key standouts, whatever it might be. I want to hear what you've got to say. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.